All right, great to see everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, CGE's 10th anniversary celebration. Um, just a quick overview of the, of the evening. We're gonna hear remarks from our uh, environmental luminaries, as I like to call of them. Um, my predecessors, mentors, and, and collaborators. I'm so excited to be here. After uh, their remarks, then um, we'll um, ha have the opportunity to, to have conversation in breakout rooms that will be organized hopefully by topic. So we'll talk more about that when the time comes. So um, but I'll just reiterate to please mute when you come in and um, keep yourself muted until, um, unless you're called on until it's your turn. Thank you. So yes, what a wonderful couple days we have had as part of this Earth Week celebration, Earth Week for everyone. Um, it's also been a great year for CGE. And as we're working to be more inclusive, I've come to see CGE as a spoke in the wheel of a bigger movement in which everyone is working together, each in their own way to protect planet and people. We are, as you know, a hub for several related programs, all working to support CARP and climate action in Evanston, and all also working towards equity in their own way. Edible Evanston supports and educates food growers and has facilitated the donation of 1,300 pounds of fresh produce to local food pantries. Natural Habitat Evanston won a matching grant from the Illinois Clean Energy Foundation this year, this year and have matched the donations already in addition to the requisite uh, volunteer hours. And the grant includes a couple of youth interns with the goal of career development and youth engagement around uh, natural habitat. Beyond Waste in normal times has the repair clinic and they're hoping to start it up again, perhaps outside the library. Watershed Collective has partnered with uh, folks from Northwestern and We Are Water, a community research project aimed at understanding Evanston's water priorities and they're targeting green infrastructure opportunities in town. Environmental Justice Evanston has passed an environmental justice resolution and is working hard to give it teeth through ordinances. And they just hosted a great panel yesterday. The recording will be going out, an environmental justice panel featuring community members who are facing real environmental justice issues here in Evanston. Go Evanston is in the process of merging with CGE's transportation task force and they are currently working for the guest with city staff on the Chicago Avenue, Church Street and Oakton corridors to provide safe uh, biking and pedestrian uh, transportation opportunities. And our energy committee from which this whole two day program emerged is led by Joel Freeman who gives new meaning to the term energy committee. And they are working hard to educate the community about uh, renewable energy options as well as energy efficiency. And this year, CGE also had a fellow from Kellogg School of Business, Hiram Hong, who helped us to craft a membership model that we'll be rolling out in the coming months. I credit Lauren Marquez Viso for making that happen. And Hiram was amazing. We're so excited about her efforts. We also have hired uh, Michael Miro and Susie Pratt as consultants to help us create a theory of change strategic plan. So that's been an incredibly valuable process for the board and I think will have an amazing impact on the organization. We have one other bit of news, but I'll share that with you later. For now, I'd like to introduce our master of ceremonies this evening, none other than Chief Sustainability and Resilience Officer and CGE's good friend, Kumar Jensen. Thank you, Rachel. Um, it is a pleasure and I'm very excited to be here this evening. I honestly can't believe that CGE is 10 years old. In some ways, I mean, I wasn't around when CGE was was started. Not, not that I wasn't born, not quite that young, but um, I hadn't, hadn't made it to Evanston yet. And I remember when I first got to Evanston, um, back in 2014 and, and heard of CG and, and started to meet many of the, um, the folks that are um, you know, involved this evening and have been involved over, um, over the past couple, you know, well over a decade. 
um, it felt like CGE had been around for, for decades already. Um, the, the organization, the respect that the organization had and the knowledge um, of the organization and its members were, were immediately clear. I, I remember um, just feeling uh, so lucky to be, uh, um, to work in a place that had such community leadership and knowledge. Um, it, it felt daunting coming into, into the place, but it also felt um, very comforting knowing that there were um, dozens and dozens of allies with experience um, and commitments to many different um, aspects of sustainability. And so um, I'm really excited to, to be able to be here to, to help celebrate um, and to help introduce uh, all of the other luminaries uh, that are with us this evening. And so um, the, the what we're going to transition into is um, a couple of uh, short, we're going to try to keep it to two minutes, um, uh, short remarks from a bunch of folks who have been involved with CGE in different capacities over time. And so I'm going to take the liberty of, of leading off um, by introducing the, the first speaker who's going to be joining us. Um, so Steve Perkins, um, it, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Steve. Steve has a long story of community organizing uh, from fighting the Vietnam War to labor organizing to leading commercial revitalization in South Shore. In the early 90s, while working for the Center for Neighborhood Technology, Steve moved to Evanston with his wife Robin and helped form CGE. Steve and Robin now live in a conservation community in Michigan City, Indiana. And Steve is gonna uh, share a snippet of CGE's origin story. So I'm gonna pass it over to Steve. Fun. I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so CGE, of course, had many starting points depending on who you want to talk to. But from my perspective, it began when I moved to Evanston. I was newly remarried to Robin, and I'd been doing organizing in South Shore uh, for many years and Hyde Park before that. And uh, so in, uh, at the end of 1998, I sent out a letter to everybody that was in the Center for Neighbor Technologies database that lived in Evanston and said, are you interested in making Evanston a more sustainable place as an expression of your faith commitment? Um, I knew that six people would show up because they'd been involved with me in a previous project where we were trying to figure out what the, the religious meaning of sustainability was. But 20 people showed up in the basement of the, of the uh, Friends Meeting House. And, uh, that group of people met more or less every month for 18 years. And it was a, it, it saw itself as a catalyst. Um, uh, and we, we tried to launch one uh, enterprise after another, uh, uh, collectively making Evanston more sustainable. We, we launched Evanston Energy Future, Evanston Transportation Future, Evanston Affordable Housing Future, which ended up uh, starting the Land Trust and then uh, the Evanston Food Policy Council, which launched the, the uh, Talking Farm. Now, in, at that time, there was nothing that we wanted to do that the city of Evanston wanted to do with us. I mean, we heard at one point that the city had cut its budget for planting trees and parks. We thought, ah, that seems a pretty innocuous thing. So we put together a program to get uh, trees donated. We even worked with the city staff person. We did a brochure. The city manager said, no, thanks. We don't want your trees. And so we, we threw up our hands and said, OK, this is not going to be a collaborative enterprise. So uh, all these organizations would get together uh, every Earth Month and bring somebody in from somewhere else that was further along on the sustainability path. And uh, the best one was from uh, Portland, Oregon, but we had from other places as well. And we'd get 100 people, usually at the Unitarian Church, uh, a few older people, and um, uh, uh, there was a decisive event when Julia uh, Carroll became the camp, uh, the uh, city manager. I um, mean, she's somebody who had never really thought much about the environment, uh, but was educated by some dedicated Evanston citizens, environmentalists, and she really got the idea that that Evanston being green was important, and. Uh, uh, she came to an Earth Month event, which previous uh, city managers had not done. She got up afterwards and said, we can do a lot of those things. And we were astonished. And a year later, she came back and she had done a bunch of those things. And as we walked out of the room, I said to her, 
why don't we jointly develop a climate action plan? And she said, yeah, let's do it. And, and that, that, was the, that was how difficult it was to uh, start the climate action plan. So we cooked up a, a scheme where we had nine committees. Each committee had two citizen co-chairs and the city uh, manager appointed a city staff person for the third. And we called a, a meeting to start things in, in the um, parasol room. And I thought we'd have maybe 60 people. So, so Steve, I'm gonna have to ask you to wrap it up in the next 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 15. So we, we had 120 people show up and that was the beginning of the planning effort and the city uh, uh, council adopted it a year later. And that's the beginning of the story. Wow. Wow, thank you so much, Steve. It's sure. so helpful to, to think back to the origins. And um, as someone who grew up around a lot of Quakers, um, I don't know how much this, uh, this statement has made it out, out in the world, but uh, sort of all good things start with, you know, among friends. So I uh, appreciate that, that, that connection. Um, I'm excited to, to transition into introducing our next speaker. Um, so Hal, uh, Hal Sprague has lived in Evanston for um, more than 27 years and has worked as an environmental lawyer at Abbott Laboratories and as a policy researcher and advocate at the Center for Neighborhood Technology. Hal now works as a community solar coordinator at Trajectory Energy Partners. Hal has also served on CGE's board from its inception, including one year as president from 2019 to 2020. Hal is gonna share a bit um, about the history of climate initiatives in Evanston and the importance of community participation. And I just wanna remind folks that it is really important we stay to our timing so that we have plenty of time for breakouts. Thank you. Thank you, Kumar. And, and I wanted to, I mean, I, there really isn't enough time to even just thank um, all the people that have been in, involved for the last probably 15 or, or more years, going back uh, when Steve was talking about and going forward from that eventful night in the parasol room. I think many of the people here or some of the people here, uh, Eleanor and myself and maybe Jonathan and others were in that meeting. Um, and it was the beginning of uh, basically it was the it, before that it, Steve was the was the spark plug um, and we carried through that meeting for the next year we we uh, that group of people in 10 different subgroups made the climate action plan we, we wrote the different parts to it submitted it to Carolyn Colopy, who was uh, uh, one of uh, Kumar's predecessors she wrote it up into the climate action plan which was subsequently adopted by the city council <clears throat> Many of you know this story now, but that was the first of basically three now climate action plans uh, that we have had. Uh, now, the last one being uh, CARP that was uh, adopted in 2018. Um, and you know, all of that uh, was, the, was the result of a continuous effort by many subgroups. Um, and before it was CGE, it was the, you know, something like the working group of climate change in Evanston uh, that eventually became a 501c3 um, and took the name CGE, Citizens Greener Evanston. Uh, and all through the years of Eleanor's and Jonathan's and other people's leadership, uh, you know, we've maintained the momentum. We've taken on these subgroups like, uh, like Edible Evanston and Go Evanston and some groups uh, have, have matured tremendously. Um, I was part of what well, I think it was called the Forestry and Water Committee. Uh, Eleanor, I don't remember, you were the leader. I don't remember if that's exactly the name, but we were dealing a lot with green infrastructure. <clears throat> and now um, I think that sort of the, the most appropriate uh, and uh, new uh, name for that or the program is the Natural Habitat Evanston. And Leslie has done an amazing job to bring the program to a new level or you know, several orders of magnitude more than what we were doing. So, so, so how I'm gonna have to ask you to wrap up in 15 seconds. <laughs> no problem. So the point here is uh, we require continuous leadership and enthusiasm and passion, keep recruiting more people. Uh, I think it's been a great uh, event, uh, a, a group of people working on these things. Um, we need to continue to reach out to partners like the Evanston Environment Board, school districts, businesses. Um, Evanston is a great place to do this work. So thank you for everybody and your work um, and keep going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hal. I think one thing that's certainly come through loud and clear through this um, extended Earth, Earth Day celebration and Earth Month celebration has been the um, 
the need and the presence of community participation and community leadership um, throughout this movement. And so um, next up, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Seventh World Ward Alderman uh, Eleanor Ravel, who is one of the initial residents recruited by Steve Perkins to help develop Evanston's first climate action plan back in 2008. She then served as the founding, uh, as a founding board member of CGE and president for four years from 2012 to 2016. Alderman Rebell has been the seventh ward alderman since February 2016, and she is uh, going to share some of CGE's early accomplishments. That's great. Well, thanks, Kumar, and it's really great to um, be here to celebrate um, 10 years of official uh, CGE uh, incorporation, but we obviously got started several years before that. Um, so I thought I would just share a few highlights from the, the fir my first year as president, 2012-2013. Um, to see if you remember any of these um, events. Um, so in addition to lots of mundane things like drafting bylaws and articles of incorporation, we were very busy taking action, holding events, and basically raising awareness about making Evanston a more sustainable community. Um, so a very high profile action initiative was promoting development of, of an offshore wind farm. I don't know, uh, several of you here on my screen were involved in that. Um, and because of CGE's visible leadership on this, CGE members were appointed to a state level offshore wind energy advisory council. And then um, they worked to draft the Lake Michigan Wind Energy Act to implement the council's recommendations. Um, and that was um, signed by the governor in 2013. Um, also very notable as we've just been talking about was um, in 2012, 2013, we achieved the goal that we set in that first climate action plan of 13% uh, reduction in Evanston's greenhouse gas emissions. And then uh, CGE members are very involved in drafting that second climate action plan called the Evanston Livability Plan um, to reduce emissions 20% by 2016. And then in terms of events, um, how many of you remember the Green Arts Show? Uh, that was spearheaded by Ann Berkeley and this lively art exhibit that we had at the Noyes Cultural Arts Center reflected and promoted uh, more sustainable ways of living. So the 2011 Green Arts Show featured a dress made from plastic bags and an artist self-portrait made out of 7,000 plastic bottle caps. And for the 2012 show, residents busily saved plastic bottle caps and brought them to the show to create art in a family workshop that was led by that artist. So I think it was a precedent perhaps for our zero waste team's efforts today. Um, and then one other event that I'd like to mention was Shared Streets. Um, that organized by Natalie Watson. And when that was modeled on the share streets phenomenon that was um, in Bogota, Colombia, Colombia. And this, the first event in 2013 closed just two blocks on Dempster Street, but it was such a success that that evolved very quickly into, it moved to Main Street, became Streets Alive, and now is a regular annual event on the city calendar. So it's just, shows the kinds of things that CGE did in the very early days that took root and are still um, viable and making us more sustainable today. Wonderful, thank you, Alderman Ravel. Um, appreciate it. Um, so I wanna introduce our next guest, uh, Ina Gutierrez. Ina is the executive director of the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse, which is a nonprofit that rebuilds homes and lives through its reuse education and workforce training programs. Each year, the organization diverts more than 750 tons of construction and demolition material from landfills. Ina has also served in other leadership capacities um, throughout the community and is always looking for new organizations to collaborate with. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, and congrats to CGE. 10 years is incredible. Um, so I just wanted to give a bit of a toast and a celebration to what you've done because now is an incredible moment. Um, a new national administration, a new mix of experience and new leaders on our city council. I feel like at every level, there are more people who care about climate change and more people who care about protecting the planet and our people, as Rachel said. Um, but it can be daunting, right? How do, you, how do you approach complex environmental social issues? And so I've been thinking about this um, mostly because of my own work at the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse. We're kind of at the intersection of sustainability and employment. And, and so Rachel, I'm gonna take your hub and spoke model and modify it a bit. I wanna introduce you to the Leatherman. This is very cool. 
This is a tool that was given to us, uh, donated by the Leatherman Company a couple of years ago, and every graduate of our workforce training program receives one. Um, because with the idea that if you don't have the right tool, you can't solve for your own barriers, right? Your own problems. And so I look at this tool and I think, okay, this is CGE. There's like the habitat people and the energy people and the water people and the food people and the waste people. These are my favorite people down here. Um, as well as all the other issues in our community. Um, it's all related. Workforce development, economic development, racial equity. Um, and so I think if we have a tool like this, I am excited for the future. I wish you all the best. Um, and I look forward, even if we are just the sad toothpick to be part of the tool to build a more sustainable community in Evanston and beyond. So my cheers to you, friend. Um, and in whatever capacity, we at the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse can support your efforts in the next 10 years, we are here for that. Thank you. Cheers, cheers, cheers. That was, that was wonderful. Um, it's a really great way to think about things being interconnected. To how do we use tools and what tools do we all need um, as individuals, but also as a community and as an organization. And so um, that brings me to our next guest. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Alderman Rue Simmons, uh, Robin Rue Simmons, who is a lifelong uh, resident of Evanston and has served as the fifth ward alderman since 2017. Alderman Rue Simmons is a dedicated community leader with experience in business entrepreneurship and development, environmental justice, and was responsible for leading the creation of the city's reparations fund. Thank you, Kumar. Very happy to be here and congratulations, CGE. I'm really surprised to learn this is 10 years for you. I was introduced to CGE by my colleague and friend Eleanor several years ago. And I thought then that it was a very like historic environmental organization based on how excellent um, the leadership was. I worked very closely then with Leslie and Jonathan, uh, Mayor elect, uh, I'm sorry, Alderman elect. Uh, Jonathan, as well as um, Jerry. Um, and so I learned a lot from CGE, um, understanding the neighborhood that I lived in and uh, being next to the waste transfer station, not really understanding um, that that was an environmental injustice and that we had a right to um, better air quality. And through the environmental justice initiatives, um, their efforts and advocacy and the leadership and partnership of CGE and staff um, you know, there are better outcomes and now monitoring. Um, so I am now aware I've been very well educated um, by CGE leadership, as well as my own neighbors, Janet Alexander Davis and Miss um, Dorothy, as well on what is uh, appropriate environmental wellness. And that's something that I'm committed to. Um, and I'm able to inform my neighbors and friends about uh, environmental awareness um, now as well. One thing that I would like to add is um, my new love for our environmental assets and how um, the trees and air and um, have really been an important part of my own wellness plan. And I really would like to encourage other residents to look at our um, natural space as a way to connect to, um, to wellness as well. But through CGE, I'm so grateful I've learned all about weatherizing my home and living more energy efficient. And um, I drive less, I eat less meat now. And I'm really conscious of the things that I um, purchase and reuse and repurpose and upcycle. And so I have CGE to thank for educating me. And I've passed all of this along to my friends, neighbors, and constituents through various programming and um, lifting up the work of CGE. So I just want to say thank you to CGE for all that you do for our city, for your commitment, for how hard you work. It's incredible the amount of time that you all spend um, in protecting our natural environment. Um, but I want to thank you on behalf of the residents of the Fifth Ward and on behalf of the entire city council and staff for what you do to make Evanston great. Thank you. So, so well said and so true. Uh, thank you uh, over and over again. Um, and so as Alderman Rue Simmons mentioned, uh, we have a, an Alderman elect in our midst as well. 
Um, so I'm excited to introduce um, Fourth Ward Alderman-elect Jonathan Newsma, who has served in many leadership positions on the CGE board, including as secretary, treasurer, vice president, and president, although not all at the same time. Um, Alderman-elect Newsma has substantial renewable energy experience and has served as the chair of the Utilities Commission. Thanks, Kumar. Uh, and hi, everybody. Nice to see some uh, familiar faces from over the years. Uh, I'm going to share uh, a quote, which I'm sure is familiar to everybody. It's a Margaret Mead quote. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And I think what we've done here in Evanston uh, with CGE kind of demonstrates uh, Margaret Mead's concept. We've changed the world here. We've gone from a small group of 25 or so people to a group of 2,500 people. Uh, we're on our third climate action plan. Our carbon footprint is down uh, ballpark 25% uh, over the last decade. Uh, we have, this is very important, something that I noticed uh, as uh, I was running for Alderman, is that we have made uh, environmental sustainability an issue in local elections. That wasn't, wasn't the case even four years ago where we had to force candidates to, uh, to address environmental sustainability. This time around, almost every single candidate running for local office had an environmental platform, a sustainability platform, an environmental justice platform. And it didn't have to be prompted uh, to, to do that. So this is you know, thanks to the work that we've done locally and you know, things are happening nationally as well, but it wouldn't happen here in Evanston if it weren't for you know, our, our group here with Citizens Greener Evanston. Uh, and if we're talking about thoughtful, committed uh, citizens, I wanna just uh, give a shout out to some of the uh, original CGE folks. Uh, it helps to have uh, somebody like Brian Bacheris uh, on your group. Brian uh, is the kind of guy who will approach the governor at some kind of fancy dinner that we were at and you know, buttonhole him for three minutes to talk about how cool Evanston's offshore wind program is. And that was really, you know, frankly, an important step in advancing that level, uh, advancing that issue at the state level. Uh, it also helps to have a policy wonk like Jeff Smith, you know, who knows the law and has been an environmental activist, uh, you know, almost as long as anyone uh, on this call, I'm sure. Um, it helps to have folks on city staff uh, like Kumar, Kumar's predecessor, Catherine Hurley. Catherine, I'm not sure if you're on this call, but you know, she was an important part of this program. Uh, of course, master convener, Steve Perkins, you know, thank you again to Steve for, uh, you know, being the, the godfather of all this activity in Evanston. Uh, folks like Nate Kipnis, uh, Nate, I don't know if you're on the call, but our, uh, Evanston's very own, uh, you know, world famous lead certified architect, Ellen Galland was part of the uh, Renewable Energy Task Force. Mike Jonathan, 15 more, 15 more seconds. <laughs> also, it helps to have... Uh, it helps to have some social lubricant. If you guys remember the Renewable Energy Task Force used to meet at the DPOE so we could really come up with some good ideas. It also helps to have uh, t-shirts. If you guys remember this one from our renewable, uh, from our aggregation campaign. And last but not least, it helps to have one of those uh, thoughtful and committed citizens be willing to put on the green man costume and, and walk around Custer Street Fair to uh, raise awareness, let's say. So thank you all very much and uh, hope to uh, see everybody again soon in person. Wow, there, there's definitely some swag there that I hadn't seen before. So I'm gonna have to track some of those down. Those, that that t-shirt, I, I want one of those t-shirts. Um, so as we're getting close to uh, our breakouts, I wanted to also introduce Joel Freeman. Uh, Joel's name has been brought up a couple times already, but Joel is a longtime member of CGE, a member of their board, a former member of the City's Utilities Commission. He also served on the Mayor's Working Group, which was responsible for the creation of the Climate Action and Resilience Plan. And I think Joel is, is going to start us off with some thank yous and acknowledgments as we, as we get going. Yeah, there's, you know, there's so many people to thank here. And the, um, the work that we have the opportunity to do now, you know, stands on the shoulders of all the people who did work before. Um, for our Earth Week for everyone, I wanted to extend, um, you know, some special thanks to a couple groups of people, some of which overlap. 
Um, our tech support team, Ashwin Valagandla, um, really shepherded our Zoom process and, uh, and made that uh, work as best as we could do with that. Uh, Tim Saunder put together the, the majority of the uh, correspondence and, and web page and registration information. Chuck Wasserberg also uh, did a lot of the communications and so forth. With, without those people, a lot of this just couldn't have happened as well as it had. Um, then we have our, our other Zoom hosts, uh, Bea, Zbig, Andrew, who's our Zoom host uh, right now, uh, Gene, Steve, and Bruce, all helped um, you know, make our guests and presenters uh, uh, look look good. So uh, I want to extend some thanks because we don't get to see them all the time. Um, then we have our, our moderator and planning team, Rachel Rosner, who's boundless energy and endless capacity to brainstorm has really come up with a, a good program uh, this this time and, and um, got to give her a lot of credit for that. Um, we've got some a lot of other CG people who are also part of the, the moderator and, and planning team, Gene again, Brian Bacharis, Rick Nelson of Environmental Justice Evanston, Leslie Shad, Natural Habitat Evanston, Lynn Shiar of CG Energy. And then of course the collaboration continues. You know, we have uh, folks from the city, Kumar Jensen, Asia Gilbert, all are, are helping uh, organize uh, the presentations we have. Uh, Bea from the Evanston Public Library and uh, some great help from our Sierra Club uh, folks, uh, Mila Marshall and Katie McFadden will be moderating uh, tomorrow's session. So I just wanted to give a special thanks to, to those folks because they're not always highlighted um, the way the, the presenters are, but uh, they are really key to, uh, to making this work. So thanks to all of them. Thanks, Joel. Well, I'm, yeah, I really just appreciate um, all these different perspectives and weaving through time and showing us tools and old swag and um, testing our, testing our memories. Um, really, it's, it's really wonderful to be hearing all these stories and, and thinking about um, celebrating CGE. And so before we, we jump into our next phase, I want to introduce um, or bring back up uh, Rachel Rosner, who I think has a special guest and maybe some other thank yous that she'd like to do. Rachel? Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. What a fun uh, event. It's been amazing hearing the stories and really kind of building the whole narrative that all of this uh, rests on and gives it gives the long view, which is so important sometimes when you're in the tunnel. So, uh, and I, I really want to echo Joel's thanks to the whole team. It's really been a fun process creating these couple of days. And if there was a live event, I would be asking different groups to stand up for applause. And I'd be pulling Joel up on stage and confetti would fall down and people would be <laughs> throwing flowers at him because, uh, it's been a really, I mean, we started this process in, in February and, uh, and we've really uh, pulled it together because of, of that amazing team effort. Okay, I am going to attempt to uh, share my screen because our youth board members made a two minute video and then, um, then we'll move on to our next special thing. So uh, cross your fingers for me and the technology, here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Sarka Laker on the top left and today we want to share with you a little bit about us CGE youth members and how CGE has impacted us. I personally have been on the board for almost two years as well as Mia, picture below me, and I'm so grateful for the connections and valuable knowledge I've learned from CGE. Pictured on the top right is Jacob Brodsky, another senior ETHS and CGE board member. Hi, my name is Lily Aaron and I'm a junior at ETHS. And I am the hub coordinator for E-Town Sunrise. I am the fourth board member of the CGE Youth Board, and with that, we will be jumping into E-Town Sunrise. Alrighty, so with the help of CGE funding, plus a whole lot of inspiration from Rachel, E-Town Sunrise has pushed for more rigorous climate policy in Evanston through a number of strikes, chalkouts, and other acts of civil disobedience. From meetings at, Gib at Gibbs Mortison after school to chalkouts with 200 plus attending, CGE has aided us greatly in the execution of numerous aspects of our group. Below are pictures from protests and walkouts held at Fountain Square by Eton Sunrise. And then through these various actions, we have been able to rally an entire community of residents who are passionate about the possibility of a greener Evanston. Awesome. 
So next is the Sustainability Committee, um, which was formed by Mia and I, along with another senior, Louise Bond, in the fall of 2019. And it's essentially a collective of students, teachers, and adults in the community. We're all passionate about sustainability at ETHS. We were lucky enough to have some CGE members help us with the agenda making, environmental demands to make to the administration, and more. One of our more significant accomplishments has been getting composting in the South Study and Teacher Cafeteria. Awesome. So, inspired by CARP and the wonderful work of the CGE members who helped put it together, Northwestern junior Tony Inhorn and the four CGE youth members created a list of most important environmental demands mayoral and aldermen and candidates must take in order to make Evanston a leader in environmental justice across the North Shore. We were able to secure signatures from over 100 concerned youth, numerous aldermanic and school board candidates, and all three of those running for mayor. Pictured here is a screenshot of our meeting with newly elected mayor, Daniel Biss, discussing the implementation of the actions included in our pledge. Yes, and without the help of CARP, we wouldn't have been able to have so much material for the pledge. So we thank CGE and other volunteers for that. And I am personally a leader of the Climate Action Committee, which is a service-oriented group at ETHS. We've actually held multiple cleanups at Clark Street Beach pre-COVID, and CGE has helped us understand the importance of volunteering and keeping Evanston clean and beautiful. Here are some pictures from the cleanup on the left. Awesome. So ultimately, CGE has provided us with the important tools and leadership skills that are necessary to further the fight against climate change. We are so excited to bring this knowledge into the next chapter of our lives and are super grateful for all the work that CGE has done both within and beyond the borders of Evanston. Okay, that ended abruptly. All right, wasn't well, that sweet? I'm very impressed and uh, and fortunate to have such amazing youth board members. I do need to. I had I had it together, I would have made a slide of the board. I'm just. I mean, you've heard a lot of board member names, but I have to also really shout out um, Chuck Wasserberg, our communications guy and board secretary with whom I would not be functioning, without whom I would not be functioning. Christy Klimas, our treasurer, who uh, is the linear thinker of the outfit, and Lauren Marquez Viso, who I sometimes say that she's the Dick Cheney to my George Bush, but I, <laughs> I, just, I just follow her lead because she's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of insight. But we're not, we're not, you know, you know what I'm saying. I, may, I mean it in the best way possible. <laughs> Um, so, um, additional program leads very quickly. Um, Barbara Miller, Ken Kassman, Leslie Shad, Allison uh, Sloan, uh, Claire Talon Ruin, and then uh, some at large board members Sarah Diggs, Jerry Hurst, who's a real superstar in town. Uh, Jean Saunders, who is a new member who's just done a million things for us, uh, Peter Londy and Ann Terry, and uh, Jeff Smith, who was mentioned as a, as a original member. So let me find my notes for this next thing I need to say to you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Shoot. Something bad happened. I, thank you for your patience. Appreciate it. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm going to wing it. Um, here we go. I am super excited to introduce CGE's first ever executive director, Joey Feinstein. We're, the hiring committee was absolutely elated to find such a gem as Joey. He's got tons of passion and relevant experience as the founder of Climate Cycle, a highly successful climate nonprofit. He's got the fundraising background, the community engagement, the equity piece. Now he's also um, Joey Feinrein, so he's got an additional sustainability uh, business that he works for, and uh, we're super excited to have him on board. So take it away, Joey. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Thanks, everybody. It is such a thrill to be with you tonight. It is such a thrill to be coming on board CGE. For reasons that are probably obvious, I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I truly do. I remember 
going back probably 10, 11 years ago when I first met Steve Perkins and him talking about CGE and just to see where it is now and to be in this role is a pinch me moment for me. So I'm incredibly elated to be here. Um, and it, it's also very humbling uh, to feel this way. And I think if there's one thing above all else that's appropriate to bring into this work, it's humility, both because we all play a part of the problem and we also can be part of the solution. And I feel like there's still so much for me to learn, even though I've been in this work for some time now. I'm very blessed to have been born and raised in Evanston. And if you take an inventory of today's speakers, it's probably clear why. I grew up two houses down from the L tracks, block north of Foster in central Evanston. Amazing place to grow up. And as I was biking my two-year-old son home from daycare today, I was reflecting upon, as I often do, what is it really going to take to ensure that he has the same kind of future and global stability that I enjoyed and so many of us have enjoyed growing up and that we want to usher into future generations. And I really feel like a huge part of that equation are examples of what sustainability is. Granted, we're making this thing up as we go along. We're building the airplane as we're flying it. But we need examples. We need beacons. And I really feel like CGE encompasses that. Evanston has such potential to realize the vision of CGE as being one of the most sustainable cities in America. And as Jonathan mentioned earlier, the carbon footprint of Evanston is down 25%. And how are we going to continue to meet those CARP and equity goals that we're driving towards? And I humbly, truly humbly feel that I can be a part of that. And if I didn't truly believe that, I wouldn't be here because I feel like our work is the most important work on the planet, literally and figuratively. So with that said, again, I'm just thrilled to be here. It's a pinch me moment for me. And thank you to all of you who have made what CGE has done to date possible. And I'm so excited to be working with you for years to come. Thank you. Um, so let's get into those. Yes, let's give that a moment. Yeah, really exciting times. This is really a, 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 a exciting night, big new chapter for CGE. So um, my dog is barking. But I uh, would like to go ahead, Andrew, if you can do the breakout rooms. Um, there, we're going to try this, organize sort of, um, we're going to make a, a zero waste, an energy, an environmental justice, and a CGE past and future. I'm forgetting one. But we have 31 participants right now. So that might be a nice size for conversation. Um, and we have folks who know who they are who will sort of be joining each of those, um, those breakout groups rooms to, to, to facilitate the conversation. Um, how are you doing, Andrew? Uh, unfortunately. Rachel, we are having some technical issues, so we're going to have to remake the meeting in order to make in order to get the breakout rooms enabled. Okay, remake the meeting, meaning everybody should leave and come back. Yeah, so every everybody needs to leave. I'll remake the meeting. Hopefully well, by I, then. I feel like then let's let's just what if you can just unspotlight sure. and we can and people can just raise their hand and we'll just have a, a bigger conversation. Twenty eight people is manageable. <laughs> um, sure, sure. <laughs> Let me get everybody down. Thank you, Alderman Simmons. Okay, yes. I will take this opportunity, this awkward silence, to uh, mention that tomorrow we have a, a legislative session with um, Congresswoman Schakowsky, uh Laura Fine, Robin Gable, and uh, Jennifer Gershowitz hearing about CJA and also um, what's happening on the national level. Okay, I seem to be spotlighted. That's that's not good. Okay, now you're spotlighted. Can we do it just gallery? Is that? Yeah, we should we be able to. Now?
think the gallery view is now up to each individual person to, to change their view. Yes. The oh, there it is. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kumar. And thanks, Andrew has been a real hero through this whole process uh, with the tech. So really appreciate it. So I would say let's go ahead and use the, yeah, Bea's clapping for him. We've, um, Go ahead and, and, and use the little yellow hand. Oh, I see one, Steve. Yeah, Steve, yeah, this is Steve Gorenson, um, an ex epa -er alumni uh, living in Evanston since 1973. But I, I just wanted to say that tomorrow, first of all, the, 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 the whole week of uh, seminars were just webinars were just uh, amazing. And I really celebrate all of them. Uh, they were so informative. So I just wanted to, shout out for that. Um, but I did want to announce again, again that the beach, beach uh, cleanups are tomorrow. Um, I'm hosting the uh, one over at uh, Lighthouse Beach and there are several other beaches obviously being uh, clean, cleaned up. So um, think about that uh, if you want to participate. I realize it might be drizzling, but uh, we're still going to do it. So I just want to announce that and uh, that's tied with the clients for the Great Lakes. Wonderful. Ina. Just to add of other things happening tomorrow after the legislative event, um, the Evanston Rebuilding Warehouse is doing a free cycle event in our parking lot. So if you are a geek for reclaimed building materials, um, it, if it, you can take it, you can have it. Um, and so it'll be tomorrow. We're at 1245 Hartree Avenue, the purple building on Hartree, um, come by and see us, uh, tile, doors, all kinds of fun things. What time is that, Ina? Um, it'll actually be all day. We open at 10, but not to compete, come after. Yeah, come at 11 <laughs> or after. Um, thank you. Anybody else have, have thoughts? Uh, CGE highlights or wishes? Um. I just want to point out, I, Peter made a comment that it was a green mask. It's actually a green man costume. You know, Joey, I don't know if this was part of your onboarding process, but um, <laughs> it was like amazing, Jonathan. Yeah, you <laughs> attend every meeting in this complete green man costume. <laughs> Have, have we ever did the green man the green person costume ever meet up with can man i don't know if folks are remember the can man costume that was created and and the city would take out to mm -hmm. um uh to events you know like the uh the arts festivals and things like that but i think we definitely have um some costumes for some some skits uh to mm -hmm. definitely yeah, start going yeah what should be the next thing CG de he does after COVID when we can all get together? What do you think? I guess a green drinks will be in order. I think we're ready for that. Green drinks at one of the many establishments in the fourth ward of Evanston. <laughs> oh, nice plug. Eleanor's like, oh, I should have said that. Oh, no, just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take burns. <laughs> Ken? At the Ecology Center tomorrow in the city's uh, event, uh, Edible Evanston uh, portion of CGE will have a seed swap. So everybody can come and get free seeds for their gardens for this year. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And that I think does also conflict with the legislative session, but we're counting on there being enough people to be everywhere. So. Um, that's going to be a great one. And there's, wait, doesn't um, Natural Habitat have something then too? Oh, well, like yes. Leslie was on. Did you just say that? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, Natural Habitat has their events also at the same time. Uh, uh, a, a plant sale. 10 to noon. I know they conflict, but there's a lot of people and a lot of activities. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, uh, I actually have my second shot today, so I'm hoping that I, I might have said that to you already. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, Rachel, I just yes, make sir. a comment that um, this, the conflict of all those different events reflects 
a lot of the character of Evanston. Um, Evanston has right. a lot of very progressive thinkers um, and they're not even all environmentalists, but fortunately most of them do support the environmental issues we work on, but we are yeah. obviously, you know, we're diverse within ourselves in these, you know, like eight different areas of the environmental movement. Um, but there are also many other progressive movements with HIV and, you know, children and affordable housing and all the things that really may not be, you know, environmental. So we, we are scratching their backs and, you know, and we've got them as partners. And uh, I think it's a great, uh, you know, description of what Evanston is really all about. And, and we're a perfect example of how you take what, what looks like one area and you can split it up into 10 more areas, you know, cause that's what we have here. Yeah. Good point. That's true. There's infinite capacity and passion. Hey, Tim Sonder just entered. He is another tech hero of these last few days and of CGE in general, and uh, also a leader, a co-leader of Edible Evanston. Hi, Tim. And I thought, uh, well, yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're just chatting now. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm uh, there. Video. Um, there you are. Hi, I just finished preparing maybe sort of halfway for tomorrow's seat swap for Edible Evanston. <laughs> and awesome. now I'm off for the day. <laughs> All right. Rachel, I wanted, uh, to, I wanted to respond to one of your earlier questions about what's something that, and this maybe isn't just for CGE, but what should we do sort of after the pandemic? Um, yeah. And I was, I was thinking back to some of the other, so I was thinking back to Streets Alive, and so some, some doing some very, you know, active outdoors um, activities that involve art and creation, but also showing off things that people have done. So I think that, you know, either trying to, you know, create more spaces like Streets Alive, I think yeah. would be really exciting. And then the other thing I, I think some of us have talked about um, is some, you know, reimagined uh, green ball. Um, I think that event historically has been really um, a really big draw and it doesn't necessarily need to be a fundraiser, but it certainly could, but some type of yeah. Um, celebration and convening. And I would also put out there that there have been some awards that have been, um, you know, that I think the Environmental Association has given, the Evanston Environmental Association has given in the past. But I think some, some types of public recognition for the work and the passion um, that so many people put into it, I think doing some more celebrating would be, would be great. Um, and so putting some idea. effort into that, um, the city would be glad to, to help that. Didn't we award, didn't we have the uh, Steve Perkins award that we awarded to Steve Perkins and then we <laughs> were gonna award it to him. <laughs> and then we were gonna do it again every year. I don't remember. But nobody could compete with Steve. So. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> For the Steve Perkins award. Yeah. Uh, but Celia said, let's do something like this annually, which I think is also a great idea just to always have a, an anniversary celebration. <laughs> Maybe uh, yeah. birthday, Joel. You had your hand up a little while ago. Did somebody say your thing? Or? Uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to piggyback on what Hal was saying, and maybe a little connection with uh, what Kumar mentioned. You know, um, not everybody uh, makes it to the presentations today, even though they register. And and I think it's it's helpful right. to remind ourselves that for every person who shows up and 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 expresses interest in the things that we do, there could be very well be three or four other people, who 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 share the the same views who just can't for whatever reason, and uh, so I think with, with that in mind, there's a, there's a good deal of sympathy and even a lot of people as we discussed um, uh, in another conversation who are kind of delegating um, these efforts uh, on their behalf to us to keep to keep doing and right. so so the fact that um, you know sometimes it feels like you know voices in the wilderness I think there are more people than we realize who uh, who feel similarly to our efforts so I just wanted to that call that attention to that made me think of the survey that that Hayram put out as part of our the membership study right. and that's I think maybe what you're referencing is that a lot yeah. of people said they would pay to join CGE because we're doing that work that they don't have time and energy for 
I'm going to call on you, Jeff, but I felt like I had one more thing to say. Oh, well, I'll catch you later. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. I totally agree with everybody who's expressing what I think is the feeling that post COVID, there's a real desire and need for connecting in real life. Um, Zoom has been cool. I remember when we were promised video phones at the Museum of Science and Industry when I was six years old, but it's no substitute for actually seeing people uh, face to face and being able to go up to you know a Governor Quinn and grab him by the lapel and you know, <laughs> lobby him on some, on some issue. And uh, there's there's also no shortage of uh, of work that's going to be need to be done. Uh, there's a lot of bills that are passing this week, but. Uh, I think maybe during the, the, the COVID, there's been a lot of reflection and somehow there, a momentum for work on climate has, has really built. And I feel that there's an appetite for that, especially among young people and, and we owe it to them uh, to, to do that. Yeah, lots of good um, energy the, there. The, the last thing is, uh, I hope that those, uh, I assume that the presentations today were recorded and we should put yep. them up you know, so anybody can see them. Um, I yeah. found with uh, Central Street Neighbors that things that we uh, do in real time get as almost as many views after the fact because people are now used to that and, and kind oh. of expect that and they come back to that and video and uh, online and streaming is, is here to stay. And it's uh, for many people, it's rather than the encyclopedia, you know, that we used to go to, they just Google it and they're, they're looking for video rather than even having to read. So the more of that we can do, the better. Thank you. That's helpful to hear because I felt, I felt like there was so much amazing content. I wish there was a thousand people on each session to, to hear it. So I, I, I'm glad to know that people will see it. It is eight. So if people want to dip, that's fine, but I'm happy to hang out as well. So, um, but thank you for doing this, Rachel. Oh. Rachel, we know you know oh, we like hi. hanging out with you. It doesn't oh, matter. Good. It's it's just, fine. I know. I wish some we of were the just... some of the sessions were really good. I missed a little of it, but I I'll send you a question of that I had. Okay, yeah. the videos will come, Sarah. There was so much good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Something about chicken wire, some kind of wire. I need to stop the critters from going through my house through the yard. Compost. Oh yeah, Brian said that. Right. What's it called? Hardware claw. Hardware claw. Yeah. Oh, Doreen says closed captioning would be helpful next year. That's a good idea. I know. I was really excited. I don't know if anybody caught the um, two PhD students from Northwestern at that first opening session, but they have been interviewing different people, including me and Lauren and Claire, and about you know increasing uh, Northwestern's CARP goals and also more. Um, partnership with the city and including the possibility of, of hosting a summit. So that's what I'd like next year is for this to be a big live extravaganza. And then the nighttime party would be the ball also. Um, Thank you, they also Joe and Joel for putting this together and welcome Joey. Glad you're on board. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ken. I'm thrilled I to be here. Thanks for all the work that you've done to get CG and Edible Evanston to where it is. I will, uh, Ken, I'll echo your your thanks to to Joel and to Rachel. And Rachel, like one of the best things that I did before I was term limited off CGE was recruit you to the uh, to the team. Um, I think so. Round of applause for Rachel, who's done a great job. Oh, uh, thanks, Ken. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> and um, yeah. I feel like it couldn't be in better hands. I'm feeling really good about that. And Joel, finally, uh, finally, after years of, of of courting Joel to join CGE, I guess his kids all are off at college now, so he has the time and um, is able to uh, to to join the CGE team a little bit more efficiently. So Joel, um, yeah, or maybe you were waiting for me to not be on the board, which is okay too. I don't wait for anybody, Jonathan. <laughs> Hey, Kumar, do you want to say that stuff out loud? Just yeah, I just yeah, I just wanted to say I've got to go. But um, thank you all for your leadership, your partnership. I um, it's still it's hard for me to believe it's been ten or thirteen years. Um, <laughs> CG has been a really important part of my experience in Evanston, and I remember 
when uh, my predecessor Catherine hired me and you know she was orienting me and talking about the city departments, I was surprised at how little we actually spent talking about other city departments at first. She spent a lot of time talking to me about community members um, and leaders who she said, you've really got to sit down with Wendy Pollack. You've got to talk to, you know, to Eleanor Ravel and you've got to meet all these people because you're going to be working with them and those relationships are going to be, um, you know, really the most important part of your work. And so um, it's absolutely been true. She was absolutely right. So um, really looking forward to um, continuing to work alongside all of you and welcome, Joey. It's very exciting. Looking forward to working with you as well. So yeah, me too. Um, thank you for a great, great events. And um, I will be at the Ecology Center stuff tomorrow, but we may try to live stream the um, the legislative session. We'll see what the weather's like. Oh, so I love that. Kumar, thank you so much it. for emceeing tonight, too. That was really yeah. huge. Really made My it pleasure. Fun. It was an honor. And we yeah. really appreciate, Kumar, you and uh, your office uh, at, at, and what you're doing. So, absolutely. Oh, that, too. Bravo. Not just tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'll, I'll see you all soon. Take care. We need we need three or four or five Kumars. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Hey, that's Eleanor, sure. that's a great idea. <laughs> you and I can work on that. How okay. do we clone them? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Okay. This has been really great. Thank you, Rachel and everybody. Thank you, Thank you Eleanor. Been wonderful oh, to see Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Steve is a celebrity guest too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, I wanna I wanna reiterate uh, what an amazing effort uh, Rachel and Joel um, put into this and how many hours it, it takes. <laughs> yeah. Tim knows. <laughs> Tim put in a mother load of hours and that was yeah. 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 Thank you, Tim. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. Bye everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a nice night. Bye bye. Good weekend. Good night. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.